So, um, uh, potty training was super easy with her. Like they're very fast learners because of how smart they are. Like they're actually pretty easy to train in some ways. They're very food motivated. Mona is very food motivated. So if you add food to the equation, they'll do whatever, you know, um, uh, again, you know, the prey drive is real. They will go after stuff. So you do need to find a way to like develop recall. Um, and I, I highly recommend the shock collar. Uh, if, if it's a dog that's sensitive to pain, you know, if, if you have one of those dogs, that's more tough boned, um, or, or just, I don't know, um, maybe it has something to do with intelligence where the, you know, the, the person who told me the story about the Husky, maybe the Husky didn't, I, I think Huskies are pretty smart, but like maybe the Husky didn't realize that the, the, sensation meant like come back or something but you know so it does require a little bit of um planning but um they're fast learners and they're smart and and they respond well to whatever training technique you use as long as you're consistent with it um let's see yeah so i don't really use a leash with her very much and you know and and she's learned not to go up to people unless i give her permission to and not to go after dogs unless i tell her it's okay um, so that's all stuff that you can teach them. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's just a very, very special dog. They do need a lot of exercise. I mean, not, there's somebody who posted like three hours of running a day. Um, with Mona, absolutely not. I mean, who has the time to do that? Um, you know, if you are a regular person with a job, you know, it's like you barely have three hours to yourself at the end of the day. Um, what we do is we try to do two outings a day, you know, and both of them anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half, you know. So sometimes we will do three hours, but it doesn't have to be every day. There are days when it's super cold here. It's like, you know, four degrees out and snowing and blowing wind and we don't go out at all you know and i'll just give her a bone or something so it is good to have some backup like toys she's super mona's very independent um in terms of like uh entertainment which is something that was not at all the case with my lab you know so she can entertain herself with whatever you give her like a chew toy or a bone or a ball like she'll literally do this like funny little like kind of stepping motion with her paws to like push the ball around. Like I can take her in the backyard and leave her there for an hour and she'll play by herself and be super um, entertained, you know, and then she'll come in when she's done. And oftentimes that that can satisfy the need to go out when it's really cold, when, you know, I'm in the I'm having a day where I just can't I don't have the time, but it is good in general to devote you know anywhere from an hour to, to two and a half three hours if you have extra time you know on the weekends or something um to get them running and yeah i can't it can't just be a short little walk generally like you can do that you can get away with that sometimes but it really needs to be like you, ha you do have to be somebody who likes the outdoors who likes hiking who likes running we've just started running together and that's really satisfying and I get really energized and she does too. And it's, it's cool. Um, uh, so yeah, I think you do need to be outdoorsy, you know, inclined to activity to be really satisfied with a Ridgeback. Cause she does force me to be more active. And that's part of the reason I got her was that I, 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 I like having that kind of a bond with a dog. So I do think that's important. Certainly doesn't have to happen every day. Um, so, and I think as they get older, they chill out more. And so she, I mean, she's a puppy. And she's just fine with like an hour or two a day, you know, um, and even less than that, if I give her stuff to play with inside, you know, um, and they, if you give them stuff to play with, they'll leave your, you they'll leave your belongings alone. And if you, when they don't leave your belongings alone, if you, if you put them in their place, they will leave them alone. Like she doesn't tear up my house, um, because I've taught her she's got hell to pay if she does, you know, and so. Uh, they learn. They learn that way. They respect. They respect dominance, healthy aggression. They respect. And you know, I've gotten into conversations with people a lot about like, you know, being physically forceful with a dog and people being super not okay with that. And I think like again, as long as you know how to, like, how to hit a dog without hurting it, you know, and also like, 
for as much discipline as you dole out, you should be giving like like five times that amount of love, you know. So as long as you're loving the dog uh, enough, you can you can be you can you can be um, you can be more forceful with it sometimes, you know. And so it's like as long as you're not um, depriving your dog of love, you can lean into your um, your alpha energy a bit, you know, without without causing any harm. Like there are people that that have said like. A dog will never forget if you hit it or, you know, they always remember everything and they never forgive you for blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, th there are times when I've gone a little too far with her and um, and our, our bond is very strong and is continuing to build. And, you know, I, I can't even imagine how close we'll be a year from now. It's been I've had her for eight months and she's like my best friend. And, you know, we're very close. So, um you don't be afraid to to step into the shoes of being the leader in whatever way that that looks you know and sometimes you sometimes you can't you, you have to be the mean the mean uncle a little bit um and that's okay you know and they, they learn that they can trust you and they can respect you and you got to be predictable you know and you got to not deprive them of love afterwards like if they do something wrong you put them in their place and then you know and then it's over you know you don't like punish them ongoingly like that, I think that's where the resentment builds and where the bond starts to break down. Um, so you just have to be able to like wipe your hands of it and then, you know, re reestablish the connection. So anyway, those are my two cents about raising a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Um, they're very sweet dogs. Um, they play rough. They really like to socialize. So even though they can entertain themselves, it is really good to have them in pretty constant contact with other dogs. Um, but they do like to play rough. So, you know, you have to be careful of there are people that don't like their dogs to be roughed up. And so you need to, um, you know, be prepared to step in if, if your Ridgeback is being a little too rowdy because they're very well known for that. Just going to give you one last look of my beautiful little girl. She's really sweet. And that is it. And maybe I'll, I'll post something about her in the future. Um, because it, it is fun to talk about this breed. They're a very special dog. Thanks for watching.